Hey YouTube, Big Swole 58 here, and welcome back to the channel. So, continuing with my uh, Smith & Wesson Revolver Stock Refinishing Project, um, in uh, part three, or step three of that process, and that's applying the new finish. Now, I've applied the uh, first coat of the gloss polyurethane, and I've allowed them to set and dry for about four hours. Now, that first coat is going to be uh, partially absorbed by the wood, being that is uh, typically pretty raw at this point and uh, no matter how hard you try if you're going to always have some dust nibs or little dust particles that's going to settle on that uh, poly uh, when it's drying and uh, so before you move on to the next step or the next coat you're going to need to uh, remove those and they're usually not pretty you know they're not anything significant but you do want to remove that before you move on to the next coat and what I'll usually do with that is uh, remove it either with a uh, like a, a coarse paper towel or my preference is just to you know wet sand them off and I use a 1500 grit uh, thoroughly wetted sandpaper and uh, that'll get them pretty dust free smooth surface again yet it won't remove any of the uh, previously applied coats of uh, poly. Again, all you want to do is just kind of wipe them off just to get rid of the dust, make sure they're clean and dry, and then you're ready to put on your second or subsequent coats. So, again, 1500 grit wet uh, sandpaper, and you just I just rub them off, uh, no pun intended, but I just rub the uh, surface real good, just to remove any kind of dust particles that may have settled uh, during the drying process. Um, I'll usually, you know, just run my finger along it just to see if I can feel them. But I apply no pressure at all. You just rub it, rub them with the uh, wet sandpaper, and it'll remove any of the uh, dust particles of uh, that have settled. Uh, again, I don't want to remove any of the finish. I just want to make sure I'm starting again with a good, smooth finish surface to uh, apply the next coat. Uh, wet sandpaper make sure it's thoroughly wet it <clears throat> it's probably been setting for about soaking for about 15 minutes so once you get it off all your dust particles off you just, I just take a clean dry paper towel or a, a cotton rag if I if I have one available and then for this a, a old you know t-shirt works good and then I'll spray them off with a, either some canned air or some compressed air and I'll just move on to the next one just takes a minute or two on each one just wipe them dry I'm sorry just uh, wipe them with the wet paper just remove the dust particles uh, I'll check from time to time with my finger to make sure I got them all and uh, just takes a just a you know minute or so to make sure keep your paper good and wet uh, that way it doesn't load up and you drag scratches in the in the uh, finish that you just applied and uh, just lightly uh, rub any particles off that may be there. Um, like I said, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Just dry them off real good. Uh, and you, know, you you definitely don't want to don't want to saturate them with water. You just want to make sure that you get them uh, get them clean of particles and then blow off any excess with the uh, you know with the uh, air. Uh, be careful make sure you get all that water out of the uh, check it areas because you're going to be reapplying poly there and uh, uh, an oil based finish won't adhere to anything that's a uh, water wet and I just repeat this process for for all of them it's a uh, it's nothing hard nothing tedious it's just uh, you know what you need to do if you want to have a good clean clear smooth finish uh, doesn't take a lot of time. Just be careful. Keep your paper good and wet. Uh, but you don't want to saturate your part, you know, or your grip. You just want to make sure it's wet so you don't uh, drag any of the old finish off or uh, create any kind of heat that could actually uh, dull it. And uh, like I said, just go through each one of them one at a time. It takes a, a minute or less. And just wipe them clean, wipe them dry. Uh, I 
and uh, take a little canned air and blow off any water or dust that may be uh, present. And the biggest thing is to make sure you blow all it, blow all the moisture off of it. Again, it will not. Your poly finish will not stick. Will not adhere to anything that's uh, water wetted. Uh, if you think you got, uh, you know, too much water on it, allow it to dry, or even even take a a paper towel slightly, uh, you know, dampen with some mineral spirit, and. Uh, wipe over the uh just the uh, finished area of the grip and that'll take off any water or uh moisture that may be uh housed on the finish or in the wood okay so we just about done here with this one and should be now there are sometimes if you get right there along the ridge you'll feel dust that loves to settle there just like I said, run your finger over it, pay a little, just a little extra attention to make sure that you got them good and dry, um, all of the uh, dust off of them, and you'll be ready to move on and to coat number two. Now, when you're finished, like I said, dry them off, blow them off real good, set them aside, and uh, now you're ready to apply your next coat. Okay. Now, before you proceed to applying your next coat, make sure your area that you're working in is good and dry. You want to make sure all of your water, any kind of water and moisture has been removed. If you touch water and touch that surface of that grip, that poly will not adhere. It'll actually streak. It'll make a, a, a emulsified mess. You don't want that. Make sure your hands are good and dry. And, uh, if you're wearing gloves, make sure you get all of the water or everything off of them. It's just it's just good business. Uh, don't create work that you don't have to have. You don't want to have to redo this. It's not a lot of work, but it is. It is work, but it is fun. Again, we're applying a thin polyurethane. It's about a 60-40 blend polyurethane to mineral spirits. And it's thin enough where it's almost self-leveling. Uh, you, I mean, generally just cannot mess this up. So I'll take a little artist brush, and what I'll do is I'll start I'll brush the uh, the checkered areas and I'll always start in that groove around the checkered area you just don't get it over saturated with a poly just you know just a nice little drop or, or two and just put it in that groove and just go around spread it out real good and thin uh, again I say it's kind of self leveling but you just want to make sure it's not not puddling or pooling anywhere otherwise you'll have a a kind of a cloudy uh, high spot or a lump in there you don't want that and uh, now again this stuff is thin you can brush it on just as easy as you can wipe it on but I'm gonna illustrate again how smooth it goes on even with a brush and leaves no brush marks uh, this thin poly is a uh, it's, it's self leveling so you don't really have to do a whole lot to it you just wipe it on or brush it on uh, be careful around your medallions. You don't want to get those, you know, overly coated. Avoid them if you can. But if you can't, one coat of a poly isn't going to hurt them at all. You're not going to lose any of the appearance or any of the uh, uh, the feel of it. But it uh, it will help keep it from. Uh, it actually, it'll prevent it from tarnishing anymore in the future. So uh, that's not going to hurt. It's no different than a lot of the high quality uh, electrical appliances and lamps and things you buy. They have a coat of uh, lacquer used to spray it over them. So you're not going to hurt anything by doing that. And uh, like I said, just, just brush it on. Um, just a little bit goes a long way. This stuff is thin. Uh, just kind of brush it out. Very light strokes. Just kind of feather it out. It's self-leveling. So you don't need to worry yourself too much about brush strokes. But you do want to be mindful. You don't want to leave a. You don't want to overcoat it because it can get thick on you and uh, and it'll roll toward the edges. And when you're applying this stuff, make sure you pay a little bit of attention to the to these edges, these uh, high spots, these sharp corners. This stuff feels thin and doesn't want to don't want to sit there. Now, when you're applying to the checkering, you just want to use a little bit, 
and uh, use your brush lightly brush it out in you know both directions uh, that chakra was cut uh, diagonally and uh, so you want to brush it off in the uh, along the uh, diagonal lines in, uh, both ways and that will that'll ensure that you uh, get the, uh, the pyramids uh, thoroughly coated on all four sides and it'll keep that uh, poly from pooling in the uh, grooves of the checkered areas and you just set it aside and move on to the next one I'm going to repeat the same process again this is no uh, this isn't anything fancy nothing complicated about it uh, you just uh, like I said brush it on and start in the grooves and make sure you get it in there real good make sure you pay attention to all three sides of the groove uh, you want to get it in get it on there good good and thin spread it out and uh, it goes on really nice just be careful don't you don't want it pooling puddling because like I said it will leave a a bit of an unsightly uh, spot now to show you how versatile it is here is I'm gonna wipe this this coat on you start with one of these uh, cut up shop towels I like them because they they leave very little uh, to no lint and uh, just dip it in your poly don't get it too wet and just wipe it on and this stuff like I said it is very thin it's self leveling you don't have to worry about leaving drag marks in it or anything like that it is almost a perfect finish you just cannot mess this up I mean you literally cannot mess this up and uh, I promise you you'll be you'll be pleased with the results and it's quick uh, as opposed to you know using straight poly that which is you know much thicker you got to be a lot more attentive to the details of uh, brushing out the uh, kind of feathering out so you don't leave you know too many brush marks but with this this uh, when, once you thin it you can wipe it on and uh, like I said, it's almost foolproof. The, the biggest thing, areas of concern, is when you're applying to the checker and you want to make sure that you put it on extremely thin and you want to brush it very lightly and brush in all directions uh, of, the, of the, the grooves that were cut because that way you ensure that you get all four sides uh, of the pyramids and you don't have anything pooling and landing in the grooves all right so that's grip number two if you see anywhere that you may have over over overflowed like a groove or something just go ahead and take your brush and just kind of smooth that out since you already got it in hand um, uh, don't worry about the uh, any kind of brush marks you may leave because like I said we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're going to apply this in multiple applications so it'll all kind of get worked out in the end and we're going to repeat this on the on the other two nothing complicated about it uh, doesn't require a whole lot of skill doesn't require a whole lot of effort just a little bit of patience and just a little bit of work and I promise you you'll be happy with uh, these when you finish now it is a little bit of work but you know it's nothing that you're gonna hate actually it's kind of enjoyable therapeutic a little bit but the the project once you finish I promise you you uh, you look back on it and you'll be glad you did so we're gonna wipe this on when we got the checkering done just like I said just wipe it on uh, goes on extremely easy extremely smooth self-leveling um, so easy almost a caveman could do it I guess if this was a Geico commercial but it really is that easy I mean I don't know a caveman or how hard it would be for a caveman but uh, this is really easy so that's how quick that was that's number three we'll hit the checkering real easy real quick and uh, 
I can't stress this enough. Thin, thin, thin. You want to use very thin, very small amounts of, of uh, poly in that checkering uh, because you don't want it uh, pooling in those grooves. You'll, uh, it'll fill up and it'll become kind of shallow and it'll, you'll lose a lot of the uh, grippability of the grip once you've got it mounted on the, on the revolver and you don't want to do that. Okay, that's number three, and let's get number four, and uh, we'll be done. Again, start with the groove, uh, just a drop or two. This stuff goes a long way, and just spread it out real good. And see, the thing about the thin polyurethane, it, it actually wants... To spray it. it it'll almost just lay on lay you know lay flat on its own all you're doing is just taking the brush and just kind of you know helping it guide it in the places where you want to go so i'm going to partially brush the rest of this on because i want to kind of unload my brush a little bit uh, uh, may as well just take advantage of what i already have loaded in the brush i'll wipe on the remainder just just a drop on the corner and just wipe it on. Uh, when you're wiping, you just want to make sure that you don't have anything, you know, like I said, no puddles, no lines. You want to make sure you hit those edges because uh, this stuff is thin. It tends to want to roll off the edges. Uh, and uh, we're just about done here. Just about done. Okay. Now, we'll uh, hit the checkering with just a drop. Not much at all. And, oh, I almost put too much on there. Not a big deal. We'll just make sure we feather it out very good and spread it as best you can. I know there's nothing you can do about it now once you get it on there except just try to make sure you spread it out brush it toward the groove you can always go back in that groove and uh, work that out a little bit if you need to uh, but that's, that's pretty much it so that's coat number two and look how that grain pops man this this like i said you cannot mess this up this this is just beautiful and smith and wesson used beautiful wood species when they selected when they made that the choices for these stocks and uh, you know that any kind of oil based finish just makes that grain pop you, you won't get this same result with a water based finish but an oil based finish it really does so that's coat number two we'll, you know, we'll set this aside let it dry for about three or four hours and then we'll be able to repeat this process for coat number four now, I'm not going to record any subsequent coats because, really, I'm just going to repeat this, you know, eight, ten more times until I get the uh, finished build up that I want. And then we'll be ready for the uh, final wet sand that if it's needed and uh, polishing. So, until then, this is Big Swole 58, signing out.